remember that he was taking a nap and there was a thunder and lightning storm. The thunder was really loud and Chad went in to check on him and he was just laying in his crib with his eyes open. And we were like, that's weird. Cause if he's awake, he's yelling in his crib to get out. And that's just so abnormal. Unbeknownst to us, he had lost two thirds of his blood. But then the next day we were just like, God, this bruising, like there's a lot of bruising. And it was kind of spreading up his abdomen and sort of almost into his thighs. Since the bruising was so weird, we called the, the urologist on call at Children's Hospital. And the doctor was like, well, you know, how much bruising is there? Cause that's, that's really normal. And we're like, okay. And um, you know, it's a lot. And we we're kind of describing how it was spreading. And he's like, well, can you take a picture and email it to me? So we took a picture emailed it and I think it was like two minutes after we sent it, he called us back and said, that's not right, come to the ER right away. The tests came back pretty quick um, that he had a bleeding disorder and, um, sorry. Uh, it was just really, scary because we just had no idea what that meant really. Mr. Incredible. Mr. Incredible. Mr. Incredible. Hemophilia is when your body is missing or doesn't make enough of a clotting factor. That can be a clotting factor 8 or a clotting factor 9. Our body has this perfect system in place of making essentially a band-aid for any time we have any injuries and we have broken blood vessels, which really is almost on a daily basis. The problem is, is that every time your body's trying to make that plug or that band-aid, it gets washed away. And so what we do with folks with hemophilia is we give them factor replacement and then they can create the band-aids that they need so that healing can happen. brush it over Henry's port for about 15 seconds and it kills any germs or bacteria that's on the surface of his skin. We can do kind of a little check, make sure it's dry, and it is. And then we go in with the needle. And then you pull back first to make sure you have blood return. And then you do kind of a turbid flush with the first saline. When we were in the hospital, we were definitely Googling on our phones, like hemophilia, what is this? What do we, you know, just trying to learn as much as we could. And I think that, I, I think I stumbled across the BDFW when I Googled hemophilia in Seattle or something like that. The Bleeding Disorder Foundation of Washington is a nonprofit organization that focuses on providing support services to individuals with hemophilia from um, upon diagnosis um, throughout their whole lifespan, really focusing on improving quality of life, managing insurance issues. We provide camps to both youth and also the middle school kind of age group, and then supporting them also in their senior years and also with medical support services. I was really worried about what we would see um, at, at a hemophilia community event. I was really nervous about kids with like wheelchairs or crutches or I don't know, I just, I didn't feel ready. Um, so we, I just kind of had to force myself to, to go to an event. There were a bunch of people that came up and introduced themselves and were telling us about their kids with bleeding disorders. And it was so good right from the beginning because all, there were all these kids running around. They seemed totally healthy and happy, and normal, and I didn't feel alone anymore.
So we hope that you know, newly diagnosed families know that they're, they are not alone, that there's a network of individuals here to support them. We're really here to provide a community of folks for them. Hemophilia has really taught me to see the silver linings in everything. Um, and it's also taught me not to sweat the small stuff. It's going to get so much easier. <laughs> it really is.